Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to talk about uh, another topic in Kubernetes, that is the resource quota. So let's first understand what is the resource quota, what benefit we get it, and why we should uh, use the resource quota. Okay. So now let's say uh, this is your cluster. Okay, and uh, we have a lot of nodes. Okay, for example, let's say three nodes. We have node one, node two, and node three. And overall, this uh, cluster has around, let's say, uh, 30 GB of RAM, okay, and uh, maybe a 10 CPUs, okay. That's all overall from all the node. This is the configuration we have, right? Now, uh, definitely a lot of people can access the cluster, right? Uh, uh, when you are working in an organization, a lot of people access the cluster, right? So let's consider uh, there is a dev team who has 10 people and there is a QA team who has 10 people, okay? And both are kind of sharing this cluster, okay? So dev team has created a, a namespace with a dev name and QA team created a namespace with name QA and both are creating their resources in their individual namespaces and everything is fine. But... Uh, what is happening is uh, the QA team while testing, they are creating a lot of pod, they are consuming a lot of resources, right? So most of the time what is happening, out of this 30 GB RAM and 10 CPU, QA team most of the time consumes more than 25 GB of RAM and uh, around uh, eight CPUs, right? And due to that, uh, developers are kind of complaining every now and then that they don't have enough bandwidth or enough uh, resources available in the cluster and they are not able to create their pods. So this kind of a lot of um, discussion was happening in the team. So to avoid running into this kind of a problem, okay, Kubernetes provides basically a resource quota object through which we can put a limitation on how much a dev namespace can use and how much QA namespace can use. So what we have to do is basically we have to create this resource quota object where we can specify, let's say, so resource quota, let's say if I create for a dev namespace where I specify <coughs> that CPU, we can use five memory, we can use uh, 15 GB, right? So we are kind of trying to divide equally, right? So if you just create a resource quota with this, Okay, even we have an option to provide a number of pods as well, let's say 10, okay, or whatever number as per your requirement. So, when you are trying to create any pod under any specific namespace, let's say those pods are in a dev namespace. So, whenever we submit a request, internally, a resource quota validation will happen, okay? If whatever resource we are creating for the dev namespace, which is within this, allocated range, then that pod will create it. Let's say uh, there are two pods created under dev namespace and they are consuming maybe uh, 10 GB RAM and uh, three CPUs. That's what current consumption is. But now the third pod requires uh, six GB, okay? But available is only five GB in that case. So in that case, the new pod creation will fail because we don't have enough resources available. Okay, even if the other 15 GB from the QA namespace is available, but it won't allow to use that. Okay, why so? Because with the help of resource quota, we put a limitation and we don't want to allow more than that. Right, so that's what a resource quota will help us. To do. Okay, so let's see. I hope everyone understood this concept. So let's see practically how. Um, we can do it practically, okay? Let's go to, I have a cluster running and it has, if I do kubectl get node, it is just giving a list of nodes, okay? Now let me show you how a uh, resource quota YAML looks like. So this is how your resource quota YAML will look like. So here you can see the API version v1, the kind, we have a resource quota object where we can give some name to that uh, resource quota. And then in the specification, we have specified that, okay, so 1000 milli CPU means it's a one CPU. Okay, I'm just giving a very small range. 
okay so that uh, we can quickly see or uh, quickly validate if our concept is working or not so here cpu i'm giving it as a one okay and memory we are giving as a 500 mb and ports that we are allowing is five so now we are creating this resource quota under uh, default namespace so this limit will get applied on the default namespace right so let's see if i just save this and do kubectl apply hyphen f quota dot yaml so it got created to access the quota you can do kubectl get quota so quota got created here you can see cpu zero out of one used memory 500 mb uh, zero out of 500 mb used ports right now zero okay so now uh, once you define a quota whenever you are creating a pod it's a very important to define the resource request and limit okay so we already had one video on that how we can and why we can why should define the resources in the pod definition so i'll, I'll put up link that link also in a description so please have a look at that video as well so that's again not difficult this is how typically our pod uh, looks like with the uh, resource okay so here we are saying that our pod will require minimum 200 milli cpu and maximum 300 and memory required is minimum 300 mb maximum is 400 right so now all the we are creating our first pod now which is very much in the limit because we have 500 mb limit for ram and uh, 1000 milli cpu for for cpu okay so definitely this pod should get created without a problem so if i run it kubectl apply hyphen f pod dot yaml so pod got created no challenge there so if i do kubectl get pod pod is getting created by the time uh let's go and see the quota information so in the quota you can see now we created one pod so here you can see pods one out of five created memory out of 500 300 is used and out of cpu out of 1000 200 milli cpu core is used right so this went successfully perfectly fine okay we don't have any challenge here our pod is also successfully running now right so now this was in a completely in a within a limit that we have assigned so we didn't face any problem so now let me go ahead and create another pod so what i'll do i'll just in the same pod.yaml i'll just go ahead and change the name okay i'll make it as a nginx1 and yeah i'll keep other uh, details as is so here you can see now cpu is still in the limit right earlier we used 200 and now 200 so it's still 400 which is less than 1000 but memory earlier we have used uh, 300 and now we want 300 more so which is going for 600 but our limit is 500 so in that case this pod creation should fail let's see whether that's happening or not let's try to apply this pod so keep ctl apply have a pod.yaml and here is the error you can see what is the error that exceeded quota okay why because the requested is 300 mb used is also 300 mb and limit is 500 so limit is 500 that's the reason it is 300 300 plus it's going above 500 and that's the reason we are getting error exceeded quota right so this way with the help of resource quota we can basically control that we can put a control on the namespaces that how much each namespace can use it and this is very important when your clusters are shared between multiple teams and they're using and in a mostly uh, in an organization that's what the case is so this uh, basically this resource quota feature is very important to put a limit so that everyone will get a equal share of resources to create or to deploy their applications okay so I hope everyone understood this concept, why we required a resource quota, how to create it, and how uh, the practical around it as well. So that's it for this video. Uh, I hope everyone liked, uh, enjoyed this uh, concept. So if you are not subscribed to the channel yet, please do subscribe, please share it with your friends, and please like the video. If you have any query, please put it in a comment. I'll definitely respond back on that comment. Thanks, everyone.